Hello everybody. Um, in this video, I would like to talk to you about uh, sales and operations planning and how you go from sales and operations planning to uh, detailed planning. Okay, so uh, if you think about uh, planning horizons and different types of plans, there is uh, strategic planning, tactical and operational planning. So strategic planning looks um, into uh, two or more years, three, four, five, maybe 10 years into the future. And operational plans are typically daily and weekly plans, maybe monthly also. And somewhere in between is the um, tactical plan, tactical plans, and uh, they cover multiple months uh, up to multiple quarters, but less than two years. So when we talk about the sales and operations planning, uh, typically, sales and operations plans look at uh, in, look into maybe uh, eighteen uh, months to twenty four months into the future, so um, a little over a year. And so, once you have a sales and operations plan where you balance supply and demand, then um, you need to get to operational plans. So a sales and operations plan give you what needs to happen um, on a uh, monthly basis. Uh, you're going to do this this month, next month, the following month, etc. But you need to break down these monthly plans into uh, weekly and daily schedules. And so what are you going to do today, tomorrow? this week, next week, etc. Okay, so uh, basically you have a plan for the next, uh, from the sales and operations plan, you get a plan for the next 18 months or so, but for the immediate future, for the next month, maybe next two months, you need to have a much more, much more detailed plan at the daily and weekly level. Okay, so um, today's presentation about is about how do you go from a sales and operations plan to an op, uh, operational plan at the daily and weekly level, okay? And then um, once you execute your plan, once you implement your plan, you will have uh, certain actual results, and these results will um, uh, will be recorded. So let me uh, go to pointer uh, pen. Okay. So you have this plan, uh, tactical level plan. You break it down this plan into an operational plan for the next month in terms of days and weeks. And then this will give you some actual results. Okay. And you will record this data. Okay, and when you repeat sales and operations planning for the next month, uh, this these actual results uh, that you achieved will serve as an input to update the SNOP the following month. Okay, so this is the general idea behind uh, this presentation. So. Um, I have based this uh, presentation on the uh, following um, uh, article by uh, Bauer, Patrick Bauer, Guide Post Direction Scenarios Connecting uh, SNOP to Detailed Planning. Okay, so this presentation is based on this article. And uh, this article talks about directions, plans, and guideposts. Basically, these are the same things. Uh, there is no official terminology for this, so the author uses several different uh, words for the same thing. So I will stick, in this presentation, I will stick to guideposts, okay? So 
what are guideposts? Guideposts are like uh, connective tissue, okay, that help you to go from a tactical plan to an operational plan. Okay, so let, okay, let me switch to uh, the pen. Okay, so you go from a less detailed tactical plan to a more detailed operational plan. Okay, however, this is very difficult to do if you just work off of numbers. So if somebody says, here are some numbers, here's your numerical plan, go break this down. Okay, it's very difficult to make meaningful decisions simply based off of numbers. Okay, so what guideposts do is they put context around these numbers. Okay, so if you look at an aggregate number and if you want, to, to, want it to break down, let's say you have a monthly production number. Uh, let's say the tactical plan says you're going to produce 10 items next month. That's the tactical plan for next month, 10 items. Now you need an operational plan and you need to decide how many items to make each day and each week. Okay, so you need to break the number 10 into smaller numbers across time. And of course, there are multiple ways to do it. Okay, so when you, and, and you cannot tell which way of breaking 10 into weeks and days uh, is the best, uh, just by looking at the numbers. But when you put context around those numbers, Okay, context like customer demand, um, uh, uncertainty, capacity limitations, etc. When you put context around the number 10, okay, then you can more meaningfully break down the 10 into uh, uh, weeks and days, and you can have a more reasonable plan and you can justify your plan. You can justify your choices in how you actually broke down the aggregate production number into weekly and daily production numbers. Okay, so if you don't have guideposts that provide uh, meaning and context to the numbers that come out of sales and operations plan, uh, you cannot easily go from uh, tactical to operational. Okay, so in the um, in this uh, paper, the author refers to execution or implementation that refers to operational plans. So uh, planning typically refers to tactical. In this article, in this article, the author talks about planning, and he actually means tactical planning. And when the author talks about execution, he talks about operational planning. Okay, so here's a figure from uh, the article, and I really, really like this uh, figure because it uh, it's a comprehensive view of the planning process. And the planning process goes in a circle like this. Okay. So let's suppose uh, you can start anywhere in this cycle. It's a cyclical process. But if you think about this, uh, uh, there are, uh, let's start here uh, for the sake of discussion. Okay. So here you have pre SNOP uh, meetings. Okay. So in this meeting, in these pre-SNOP meetings, you uh, think about uh, forecast, okay? Uh, what is the unconstrained forecast? How much can we sell uh, in an ideal scenario? If everything went right, how much can we sell the most? What's the most we could sell? You can also uh, think about supply plans, okay? If we didn't have any limitations, constraints, how much can we produce? 
Uh, however, we have certain limitations and constraints. Given these limitations, how, how much can we produce? How much can we deliver, ship? Okay. Um, you can look at your product portfolio. How many products are there in your product portfolio? How many products are in the introduction stage? How many are in the uh, growth, maturity, and decline phases? Are we introducing new products? Are we discontinuing existing products? So all of these things are uh, discussed in depth in this, uh, this pre-SNOP meeting. Okay, And based on demand and supply plans, you uh, uh, come up with um, alternative plans. Okay, based on all this information, here are uh, potential courses of actions. Here are potential uh, ways to react to this situation. And then you call for a senior management review. Okay, so the senior management signs off on these plans. Okay, so in this meeting, the planners, demand planners, supply planners, etc., they make a case for their plans. And the uh, if the management, senior management, uh, is uh, persuaded, then they approve these plans. Okay, so once they approve these plans, you have your tactical plans. Okay, so at this level, so let me, let me see if I can uh, write something here. Uh, no, I don't think so. Anyway, so, so at this point, you have tactical plans. Okay, I'm just going to put a T here. Okay, so here you have approved tactic, tactical plans. Okay, now you need to put these tactical plans into effect. You need to implement these tactical plans, execute these tactical plans for the coming week and month or two or three months. Okay, so you need to break down the more aggregate tactical plans into more detailed operational plans. Okay. So here you have this process of uh, turning tactical plans into operational plans. Okay, the author mistakenly uh, refers to these as tactical, but these are actually operational plans. Okay, so these are certain uh, uh, there are certain tools here. For example, MRP. Okay, we've talked about MRP. Okay, so MRP. Uh, and then we have master production schedule. Okay, master production schedule. We, we have talked about that. Uh, DRP is the logistics cousin of MRP. So this is MRP is about sourcing raw materials production, and DRP is about um, logistics, shipments, delivery, etc. Master production schedule, and this is uh, actual production, scheduling individual products on the assembly line, okay? So these are some uh, planning tools where you look at individual days and individual weeks and individual SKUs, okay? So these tools give you the daily operational schedule. What are you going to do on this day and in this week? Okay, so your plans here, you, th this gives you the operational plan. Oops, that's a terrible O. Okay, so let me, uh, anyway, you just go like this, hopefully. So this is, these are the operational plans, okay? And when you actually execute, okay, the daily and, and weekly operational plan, uh, you need to make slight adjustments, okay? So once you make a plan for next week, that doesn't mean it's cast in concrete, okay? So you have some wiggle room. You can update uh, your production schedule as you go, okay? You can 
uh, let's say uh, you can update your shipping schedule okay if there are uh, some uh, uh, late uh, deliveries you can expedite your shipments okay uh, traffic management uh, this is in this this is about inbound transportation of raw materials okay attainment actual production uh, yield etc so this is your daily uh, planning activities uh, which actually th these are the actual production and delivery activities okay and from these activities you get data actual data performance data okay so you get point of sale uh, you get actual shipment data actual financial payments actual production values diversions, deviations from the plans, metrics, share, etc. So this is raw data level, okay? So this is raw data, okay? This is raw data. And then you turn, you process this data, okay? And you use the processed data as an input to uh, your demand plans and supply plans before SNOP, okay? So uh, statistical ABC analysis, we've talked about this inventory, deviations, network design, budget, um, shortfalls, other metrics, etc. So this is a very good overall picture of um, the planning process. So, where, where are the guideposts? The guideposts are on the right upper right hand corner uh, here. So, um, uh, the guideposts are here. Okay, so they're in between uh, SNOP, tactical planning, T here, and O here. Okay. So what are they? Uh, they are alternate, alternative sourcing, capacity plans, market strategies, etc. Okay. So there are six types of uh, guideposts. Okay. Um, so some guideposts are uh, metrics. Okay. So why do you need uh, metrics? You need to. Um, you need metrics because you want to monitor what is going on okay so uh, you want to measure something that's of interest to you okay uh, you want to measure if you're meeting your goals uh, you want to uh, monitor if um, you're going off target etc so uh, some uh, guideposts are metrics. Some guideposts are targets. Okay, so you want you have a plan you want to reach somewhere, and you can uh, uh, decide what your target should be. Uh, going to the previous example, let's say you have a monthly total production target. Okay when you break down the monthly total production target each daily production target or each weekly production target becomes its own guideposts okay so that's where you need to go and then uh, very importantly uh, assumptions okay so uh, your decisions uh, will work well only under certain assumptions about the environment, about the products, customers, competitors, etc. Now, if the assumptions change, if the real world changes, and if your assumptions do not hold anymore, your decisions will not be uh, optimal anymore. So, as the real world changes, and as your assumptions uh, cease to be uh, true, then you need to change your decisions. You need to change your plans. So you need to keep an eye on your assumptions to see if they are still true 
and if your assumptions are not true anymore you need to take corrective action change your decisions change your plans then uh, speaking of changing plans you need to have backup plans okay so if the real world changes okay and you see that your assumptions no longer hold okay then you need to have an alternative course of action and that is you need to have a backup plan okay so if a tracking signal that you mon monitor over time uh, gives you an indication or if you're going to fall short of a targeted value those are the signs that you need to switch uh, your course of action and move to a backup plan then uh, some um, guideposts are um, uh, measures uh, uh, measures of prioritiz prioritiz prioritization okay so um, there might be cases where uh, you may not fulfill all customer demand okay uh, there may there might there might be cases where you cannot produce all the necessary items there might be cases where you cannot ship all the necessary products okay so in those cases you need to uh, prioritize certain products over other products or certain customers over other customers okay so in those cases you need to have a uh, plan ready to see which customers will get preferred treatment or which products will get priority over other products okay and uh, lastly detailed plans so detailed means operational plans day-to-day -day plans week-to-week -week plans okay some guideposts may be, may be those okay so here uh, scenario planning plays a hugely important role okay so SNOP um, is sometimes called a single number uh, planning process okay however um, it's more than just a single number you need to produce multiple single numbers now uh, there's an advantage to a single number because a single number is great for alignment within the organization and coordination between different departments but a single number assumes a single future okay there there are multiple possible futures and a single number doesn't consider different possibilities for the future okay so you need to have a single number for multiple future eventualities okay and you need to have a plan for all these contingencies otherwise you're left to your own devices okay if you don't have a plan f for when something goes wrong you will have to resort to ad hoc decision making okay so you need to consider multiple scenarios and some of these scenarios can be based on small changes some of them can be based on big changes in the environment okay so the guideposts help you establish a foundation for various scenarios that you should consider okay so there are routine scenarios okay what are routine scenarios routine scenarios are uh, normal uh, relatively small fluctuations in demand and typically routine scenarios are considered in uh, SNOP processes okay so as as a part of a regular SNOP process you will consider minor deviations in demand or, or products or customers etc okay 
And um, uh, associated with these uh, different scenarios, uh, you will have different um, plans and you will present these different plans along with their trade-offs. Uh, you're going to present them at the executive SNOP meeting. Okay, So you're going to present a, a not only a single plan to the executives, but you'll uh, uh, present um, slightly different versions of the same plan just in case something changes. Okay. There are uh, anticipatory uh, scenarios. Okay. Now, these changes, uh, these anticipatory changes, um, do not happen often. Okay. These are changes that you typically don't uh, observe in the real world. Okay, let's say a pandemic, a um, a hurricane, or something like this. Okay, these these um, changes are not commonly observed changes, and typically they refer to longer range uh, planning. Okay, so you need to also have plans, backup plans, for these contingencies that are rarely observed. But that, uh, but these events, even though they are rare, uh, they have a huge su supply chain risk associated with them. Okay, so these scenarios, anticipatory changes, should also be considered uh, in the SNOP process and uh, presented for the approval of the executives. Okay. So um, the outputs are basically targets, inventories, production levels, etc., expectations, sensing metrics, priorities, etc. Then um, you need to think about the worst case scenario. What is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is you get caught unprepared. Okay, so something can happen in the future which you haven't considered before. Okay, This could be um, an extreme uh, event, an extreme event that is not planned for. Now, when something like this happens, this is typically not a part of the SNLP process. Okay, And you deal with reactive scenarios on a case-by-case uh, -case basis, um, and you react to them retroactively okay something happens and then you have to react to it um, so so um, you need to have to respond to something immediately and you might not be um, um, sure if your actions are optimal or good and um, so uh, these um, changes, unexpected changes, have to be addressed in a reactive way. Lastly, there is Optima. I don't know why the author calls these scenarios Optima, but typically this is more uh, uh, a, a more uh, sophisticated or more mathematically based uh, process of decision making. Okay. Um, here you use optimization models for your supply network. Okay, so when I say supply network, uh, I'm talking about uh, who are your suppliers, which products are bought from which suppliers, in what quantity, where are the facilities located, where are the distribution centers located, all these kinds of things. And typically, uh, this um, refers to longer term planning because you cannot change your supply network in a matter of months or weeks or even quarters. Okay, so when you have uh, when you run an optimization model, and when when you come up with an optimal supply network, um, you're you're you won't be able to change that. Uh, 
uh, in a short period of time you're gonna that's that decision that supply network is going to be with you for a few years at, at the very least okay so um, typically these are not uh, part of the SNOP processes okay so um, optimization projects are typically uh, one-off projects uh, done maybe every three to five years to update your supply network okay so um, once you have your supply network SNOP depends on your supply network okay so here's an example of uh, forecasts okay and different scenarios so uh, this uh, middle line here okay is the most likely scenario around the most likely scenario we have the best case and the worst case scenarios and these are okay typical fluctuations typical uh, changes in demand so uh, we're looking at routine variation Okay, so this is routine variation. Now, a an anticipatory scenario is this scenario. Okay, this is not very likely, but if it happens, it's going to have a major impact. So the company uh, prepares a a response, a plan for this scenario. Um, that's low probability but high impact okay so SNOP is used to balance uh, supply and demand okay uh, how much do customers want how much can we provide etc however once SNOP is done uh, you don't wait until the next month so it's an LP uh, pro um, meetings are repeated monthly so once you make a decision one month you don't wait until the, uh, the next month to make a second decision so balancing supply and demand happens every day every week every month okay so your operations so once you have the SNOP plan, a month-by-month -month plan, you break down your tactical plan into operations plan, and the operations plans for days and weeks constantly try to balance supply and demand in their own little scope. Okay, so operations level plan, operation operation level planning can be done uh, maybe once a week or even. Uh, more frequently so you may uh, update your master production schedule MRP materials requirement planning uh, maybe once or e even multiple times a week in order to balance supply and demand as daily conditions change from one day to the next so let's talk about uh, priority guideposts okay now pro priority guideposts um, are used when uh, supply falls short of demand okay so demand is greater than supply uh, you cannot keep up with demand so then you need to uh, choose okay if you cannot produce all the products that customers want which products should you uh, produce okay similarly if you cannot satisfy demand from all different types of markets which market demand are you going to uh, meet uh, if you cannot ship to all the customers which customers are you going to ship okay you need to have a way to prioritize these things and uh, how do you pr prioritize them uh, typical examples are uh, 
profitability, revenue, etc. So you can start with the most profitable products, you can start with the most profitable markets, most profitable customers, and then work your way down. Or sometimes um, you can let, look at products that go together. Okay. And, and there are many other criteria that you can use. But the idea is you need to think about how you're going to pr prioritize um, your operations when uh, supply falls short of demand. So, and then there are Optima guideposts, okay? So, from time to time, companies uh, will commission a, an optimization project, okay? So, you need uh, specialized expertise for this, okay? And um, why do they do this? Uh, so let's suppose you have a supply network that's optimal. As months go by, as years go by, the location of your customers will change. Your product mix will change. Your competitors will change. A lot of things will change. And your, your supply chain network that was initially optimal will not be uh, optimal anymore. So you need to update uh, your uh, supply chain network. Well, is it urgent? Okay. Uh, is this important? Well, typically, supply chain costs form the largest cost component of any company. And typically, supply chain uh, optimization is the largest source of um, cost savings for any company. Typically, uh, if you want to start uh, 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 cost reduction in any company, a very good place to start is uh, uh, supply chain optimization because there's huge potential there. Even if you make uh, a 1% or 2% savings in supply chain costs, uh, the, the final cost savings uh, will be uh, very, very significant because supply chain costs um, account for a huge proportion of cost of goods sold. Okay, So how big can these optimization projects be? Uh, they can be sometimes very small. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, you just want to shut down a single plant. Let's say you have 20 plants, maybe 20 distribution centers around the country, okay, and you want to shut down one of them. Now, which one of the 20 should you shut down? Uh, it's difficult to figure this out by pen and paper. Uh, you can use an optimization model that will give you the largest cost savings that you can achieve by uh, shutting down one of your um, uh, distribution centers, for example. And sometimes these projects can be very, very uh, comprehensive. So that means uh, the optimization models can uh, move around all the um, um, distribution centers and or, or you know transportation lanes etc okay now just because now the the word optimization can be impressive or or intimidating but the thing is when you have an optimal solution it doesn't mean that you will get the best result okay an optimal solution does not guarantee a good real-life dollar benefit. Why? Because uh, typically there's a problem with implementing uh, the optimization models. How so? Now, um, you will hire these consultants, experts, or whatever, and they, they will build their build and run an optimization model, and then they will hand you uh, uh, 
uh, a file folder or something and they'll tell you okay uh, this is how your optimal supply chain network looks like okay so that's fine and well okay however when you implement the the new supply chain network to get the most benefit you need to um, adopt your planning processes to the new supply chain network okay so if you keep your planning processes the same and just move around your supply chain network then the the full benefits of optimization will not be realized because your planning processes are still built based on the previous supply chain network okay so so the the challenge here is uh, not so much getting the optimal supply chain network but to translate the uh, or the uh, or to figure out the implications of the new supply chain network uh, for the uh, for how to adjust existing planning processes okay now um, a lot of companies uh, purchase raw materials that are critical for them and um, a typical problem is if you rely on a single raw material supplier okay that is too risky for a lot of companies because if all you, if you put all of your eggs in in a sing, in one basket if you have just a single raw material supplier of a particular raw material then what happens if that company goes out of business or if something happens so for that reason a lot of companies find multiple sources for their raw materials okay so and um, the idea is in addition to your primary supplier of raw materials uh, which other uh, raw material suppliers should you consider how do you select between those uh, be between different raw material suppliers for that you can use uh, what if analysis and or network optimization okay so of course this also has implications for your planning process okay so as you develop uh, contingency scenarios contingency plans for various scenarios okay maybe a raw material supplier going out of business or something like that how do you engage a secondary or a tertiary supply supplier okay how do you communicate with them how do you uh, how much do you order from them how do you determine the lead times etc okay so the the challenge here is that um, the customer markets are dynamic and ever-changing similarly supplier markets are constantly changing and in dynamic so uh, you need to keep an eye you need to monitor the changes in among your suppliers as well as your customers okay so let's talk about capacity so you need to have uh, so what is capacity basically here we're talking about production capacity okay so where where does production capacity reside sometimes you have um, your own plants your company's plants manufacturing plants sometimes uh, you have suppliers if you outsource manufacturing and and there could be other resources as well transportation warehousing etc okay so you need to think about these plants because capacity is a financial investment okay whether you invest in a manufacturing plant or whether you uh, buy products from a supplier you're basically investing money okay so you have made this investment and you want your investment to generate return for you okay you don't want your capacity to stay idle 
but you also don't want your capacity to be overwhelmed okay so you need to carefully uh, monitor think about plant shutdowns okay maybe there's a uh, labor strike or maybe there's maintenance maybe there's earthquake or something like that uh, think about your uh, production yields and attainment okay so um, uh, manufacturing plants produce at different rates okay you need to think about how well the production uh, meets your uh, targets okay so you need to keep an eye on how much capacity you're using so marketing strategies okay or market strategies typically market uh, strategies are under the um, domain of uh, marketing and sales however uh, market tracking signals from markets can help planning processes okay so if you look at how fast the product is moving on the shelf uh, look look at point of sale data key accounts okay so these this um, this real-time information can help you uh, uh, better plan uh, and better anticipate future changes all right so then uh, demand shaping now demand shaping is basically increasing or decreasing demand or maybe moving demand postponing demand or something like that okay so when do you need to mess with demand um, there are two cases when uh, let's say demand uh, is falling short so there's not enough demand okay your sales are below target that's when you want you may want to intervene um, with uh, demand shaping okay that's when you may want to stimulate demand or sometimes you have extra unused production capacity and you don't want that capacity to go to waste so you may, you may want to find um, customers who will buy uh, products made by your extra production capacity so how can you influence demand one way is through uh, price promotions uh, marketing communications uh, directed at consumers or retailers okay that's one way the other way is you need to uh, you can focus on strategic customers try to develop more business with certain key customers or you may want to uh, focus on specific categories that you can uh, e easily incre increase okay however for demand shaping to be successful you need to have a proper supply plan okay so you can stimulate customer demand however if you don't have the necessary inventory ready for the customers to buy then your demand shaping will not uh, yield improved revenues now new products okay new products when you introduce a new product okay it comes with all kinds of questions about everything okay so basically when you introduce a new product you will be building a plan from scratch okay so if you introduce a new product you need to think about which customers will buy this product what type of distribution channel retailers or wholesalers uh, mass merchandisers etc how will this new product affect demand from various customers or groups of customers or uh, customer segments now uh, this new product 
will it be produced in-house or will it be uh, purchased from a supplier okay so if the if the if we're going to produce this new product do we have the necessary capacity additional capacity to make this new product uh, similarly uh, how soon can you get the necessary raw materials for this new product because there's a lead time you need to uh, order raw materials for this new product ahead of time before you, you can start production okay there are even considerations about okay what is the packaging going to look like uh, how is it going to be sold in singles or eaches pack quantities etc so there are all kinds of questions um, that directly affect uh, the planning of all aspects of you know sourcing production distribution etc uh, then uh, there are uh, project plans okay now a project is a one-time thing okay for example let's say you're implementing an, a new ERP system so that's a one-time thing uh, however uh, monthly SNOP uh, plans uh, process has to take into account this ERP system. When you implement this new ERP system, your uh, SNOP process should change and reflect the new reality of this new ERP system. Uh, let's say you're moving uh, a product from one plant to another. Instead of uh, uh, let's say you're manufacturing a product instead of manufacturing that product in plant A you're gonna manufacture it in plant uh, in plant B okay moving from plant A to plant B okay that's gonna shift demand that's gonna shift uh, transportation lanes distribution centers okay uh, maybe you're building a new distribution center okay one-time thing it doesn't happen every month or every year uh, maybe you want to invest in additional capacity maybe you want to expand your production capacity again it, you, you can't do that every month you, you just do it once and then you live with it for a few years at least and so on and so forth okay so project plans and adjustments one-time projects and then of course how much inventory to carry okay um, there are many many ways to uh, think about this okay sometimes a, an executive makes a suggestion sometimes you can consider seasonality in demand so you build up inventory to meet maybe year-end demand uh, sometimes there are uh, temporary plant shutdowns for maintenance or things like that so you need to plan ahead of time to have inventory uh, when when the for when the plant is shut down uh, so all these things need to be communicated to supply planning and worked together so at the end of the it all and at the end of it all let's suppose you have a plan on which every department has agreed marketing has agreed to it production operations logistics finance accounting senior management everybody agrees on this now this plan uh, should be distributed to the entire organization or at least entire planning organization why because uh, you have this tactical plan and um, the plan is going to be broken down into uh, more detailed uh, uh, buckets and so so the planning organization demand plans and, and sales plans and production plans uh, sourcing plans all have to have this uh, uh, this material available to them and uh, so they should have an understanding of why certain decisions have been made at the tactical plan so that they can make 
uh, compatible decisions at the operational level. Okay, uh, it's always helpful to have a summary of decisions and the context in which these decisions are made. Okay, and and with these inputs, you can uh, look at any gaps, shortfalls, uh, tracking signals, etc. So I will stop here. Uh, thank you for listening.